So this morning, I'm going to bring you a message. Uh, it's called Walking with God. So uh, the verse I'd like to start out with is Romans 8, 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So it, it's very easy in this earthly life to want to walk after the, fl- the things of the flesh, but Christ wants us to, to walk after the spirit. And that, that walk towards the spirit will bring us in line with what God would want, want in our lives. So, so I'll start, the, you know, start this sermon this morning out with a, an example of one man's walk. Um, so, you know, we all grow up in various circumstances in our lives, and it's very easy to, to become, you know, complacent. Well, it's my circumstances. I, I can't undo, you know, what the situation I'm in. I'm, I'm not going to be more than what I am today based on this, these circumstances. But sometimes those circumstances don't always indicate the direction our life's walk will take. So... There was a man in 1714 that was born in Gloucester, England. He was one of these men that, you know, his circumstances in his early life did not necessarily dictate the life that he would grow into as as he, you know, went down his walk. This, uh, you know, he this man had grown up with a great love of theater, and he would often skip school to go practice for these plays instead of going to his classes and and uh, do the things that he would, he he should be doing in his normal day-to-day life. This man, of course, later attends Pembroke College in Oxford in England, and uh, you know becomes begin begins his college career. Of course, he was not a man of means, so he often would uh, help, you know, defray some of his expenses by waiting on some of the wealthier students and doing things at the college to help them out. Of course, during this time, he starts um, participating in this group called the Holy Club at Pembroke College. It's a you know, club of believers, and, and they're on college and, and trying to spread the word. And of course, you, know, you might know two of these uh, founders or uh, participants within this club, the two brothers, John and Charles Wesley had founded this club at, at the uh, Oxford University. And of course, uh, you know, those two would later go on to found the Methodist Church and, uh, you know, be a big part of the Reformation. Eventually, uh, this man has an experience, which he calls a new birth. So he has this big change in his life that, you know, he experiences as he becomes to or comes to walk closer to God and and work you know more in line with what God has with had for him for, within his life as part of this experience he decides he's going to go to the colony of Georgia and, and begin missionary work there he does a number of years there in, in Georgia and at some point he decides I need to go back and complete my education and become a minister so he returns to England, and while he's there, he becomes this preacher of God. He also begins preaching at large you know, outdoor venues and attracts very large audiences. And, of course, in time, he thinks, well, I need to go back to America as well and, and continue the ministry there that I had started as a missionary many years before. And he starts preaching across America, you know, traveling from place to place, from colony to colony, church to church, and he even starts preaching in outdoor venues there as well, sometimes uh, reaching crowds as large as 23,000 people during this, this, this revival period. Of course, we would know those revivals today as the Great Awakening. This one man who was not on a walk to be a minister or anything of that sort his his path changed because he and he took the he walked decided to walk with God, and this man lead you know then becomes a major part of the Great Awakening in the 18th century. Of course.
course, this man's name is George Whitfield. You know, and all of this was possible because he decided to walk with God. Had he not walked with God and, and gone in the way that uh, that God w had intended, this great awakening might not have happened. This this opportunity for growing the faith and growing the ministry would have been missed. In Colossians 4, verses 5 through 6, it says, Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how to answer every man. So God wants us to, to go on that walk and and give the grace where necessary and give, you know, speak with a little bit of salt when necessary as well. But we, we need to be there and walk with God to provide that ministry and that growth of the ministry. So as you can see, George Whitfield definitely uh, demonstrated this verse in his ministry as he grew and changed over the course of his life. He was uh, greatly revered in, in the 18th century for his ministry throughout both you know, England and in the Americas. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about another man's walk. This man was born into a family of faith, but he had never experienced this new birth that, of course, George Whitfield mentioned. So at the end of World War II, he uh, it was sent to J you know, Japan to be part of the occupation force in Japan. And he spends uh, many months over there in, in that uh, as part of a unit doing that, uh, doing that duty. Of course, during this time, he decides to attend a chapel, a chapel service. And during that chapel service, he actually experiences this new birth that George Whitfield talked about. He also begins participating in Bible studies on a regular basis, you know, with all the other members of his unit that participated. And, of course, over time, he begins you know, writing home to his family and his parents and talking about this, this experience, this new birth that he had, had found. And, of course, his parents were very happy you know, about this coming to the Lord. In the months that followed, of course, his heart grew stronger for the ministry and especially for the plight of the Japanese people after the war. So the situation was very, in very rough uh, situation for the, you can imagine the, the children and the families in Japan in such a, you know, war-torn situation. So after World War II, he returns home and he decides uh, to go to uh, college. Of course, he ends up going to Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina, you know, for the next uh, four years. And while there, he meets a beautiful young woman, and they eventually get engaged. Uh, you know, he's, you know, they basically both decided once they were going to get married that they would return to Japan and become missionaries to those people in Japan. Uh, in, the, in the next year of preparation, you know, they're going through all the things they need to do, but in the end, there's a baby on the way, and it was not... Uh, probably a good situation to have a new baby in a place like Japan after the war. Uh, also, the baby had some, some health issues, so that probably wouldn't have been able to be attended to. So, of course, um, this causes the missionary board not to allow them to go, um, but, you know, this is a change from what they had in their uh, initial thought as far as where God wanted them to be. But, Although there was this setback in their planned ministry, that didn't stop them from being active in the ministry for the coming years and, and decades. He, you know, in, in the case of the man, he was very active in a church in the church they attended. He was the deacon. He uh, led a building committee to build a new church building. He even taught Sunday school on a regular basis. She likewise served as the, you know, church pianist and participated in the choir 
and helped out with a number of other ministries within the church and within the community. Um, these these two, you know, were very instrumental in uh, being you know active Christian members and and taking that walk of you know that walking in faith with with the Lord as the Lord changed their direction over time. So Jim McCarl and Betty McCarl were my, my grandparents, of course. They actively ministered to others in their church community. So though their path may have changed over those years, they continued to serve the Lord. So that's we just have to keep that in mind. Sometimes we have this set thing in our mind that this is the way the Lord wants us to go, and that may not be the way that he wants us to go. But we have to be open to potential change in that path as we go through life. In Colossians 1.10, it says that ye might walk worthy of the Lamb unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So he wants us to be fruitful where we are. Regardless of what we think we should be doing, we need to be fruitful in our walk for the, for the Lord. Of course, as we know, people come from different walks of life. They're not all in, in the, on the same path. Some, some people come uh, you know, from a house, household of faith, and that provides them a good, good foundation in the Lord. There's other people that have no Christian foundation. They don't grow up in the church. They don't grow up with Christian family. Um, also, there are people that do grow up in a Christian family, but things they, their faith sometimes falls away. But I will say, in all of these situations, God will provide opportunities for these people to walk closer with God. He always puts people in that path that will help maybe change the direction that we're going. We just have to be recognize those and, and take those opportunities when God provides them. In Ephesians 5, 8, it says, For ye were sometimes for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. So the Lord wants us to walk in the light and be light to others in, in around us. So as Christians, that's what we should strive for, is to walk in the light. And to walk in the light for those that are on those different paths. Because sometimes that person that God puts in somebody else's path might be us. So we need to take those opportunities to uh, be that light to those individuals. So, of course, uh, God wants us to walk with him in our life's journeys. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. So, of course, if we walk with God, he will not condemn us to death. In Romans 8, 1 through 2, verses 1 through 2, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk, walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me, made me free from the law of sin and death. So if we latch on to that spirit and walk with the spirit, that will free us from that law of the sin and death that Christ, uh, that's being talked about here. In verse, uh, John verse 12, verses 35 through 36, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For... He that walketh in the darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be children of the light. These things Jesus spake and departed and hid himself from them. So there again, Jesus wants us to walk in that light and it, as opposed to the darkness. There are things in this world that pull us in the wrong direction you know, and away from that path of Christ. But we need to continue to kind of watch out for that and, and walk towards the light and stay within the light that, that Jesus provides. In Ephesians uh, 5, 
15 through 16. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. So we need to be, you know, circumspect of the things that are around us and continue to walk wisely in the way that God would have us go. Uh, we should walk by faith and in the Spirit. So in 2 Corinthians 5-7, through For we walk by faith, not by sight. Just, just think about that. Uh, you know, that sums up really you know, so much of what we believe, that we should walk by that faith. We should put all our faith in Jesus. You know, it's too, too, too often that people, if you can't see it, you know, you've got to see it to believe it kind of thing, right? Well, as Christians, we've got to understand that we're not always going to see everything. We need to put our faith in Christ Jesus, and he will you know, help us in that walk. So, also Galatians uh, 5, 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So as we walk with that Spirit, we're stepping away from the, 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 the various things of this life and the lust of the flesh and, and walking closer to God. In... Uh, Galatians 5.25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So we need to, to walk in that Spirit to continue to grow as Christians. 1 John 1, uh, verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. So it's important for us as believers as we fellowship, uh, or as, as we walk in the light, that we walk with other fellow believers in the light, so that we can have that fellowship with the, you know, the, the Son, the blood of Jesus Christ. And of course, that will cleanse us of all that sin. In uh, some of the other verses, walk after his commandments, we should, we should be walking in that direction. Uh, in uh, Second John, one through four, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. In Second John, uh, verses one or one, uh, chapter one, verse six, and this is love, that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment that He that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So God provides us very various commandments, you know, throughout the Bible that He wants us to, to follow and to, to help bring us closer to His His will. It's uh, not always easy to follow, but we need to strive towards that, and and we'll have a much stronger walk with our our Lord. So uh, as we continue to walk with God, there's a few more verses I wanted to to talk about. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherein ye are called. So the Lord puts us in different places. He gives us different skills and different things. He wants us to walk worthy of that vocation that he has placed us. He wants us to, to use that to help us minister to those around us. So to take full advantage of that, what, those things that he's given to help in, in your ministry. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So, you know, we need to not just receive him and have him as our Savior, but we need to continue, continue to grow and to work towards walking in him as a believer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. So we need to, you know, work or strive to walking worthy of God. Of course, as we know, we, we will always fall short. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to at least try to be more in line with what God wants us to be. First John uh, chapter 2, verse 6. He that saith he... 
he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. So God wants us to, to try to, to walk in the direction that Jesus went and to follow that walk in our lives as, a, as a, an example of what we should do. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, And walk in love as Christ also loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet-smelling Savior. He, he sacrificed so much. We talked about a little bit about that this morning with the, with the Lord's Supper. But we, we need to walk in that, you know, walk with God and, and be closer to him as part of that, uh, you know, as part of that you know, situation. So, of course, you know, we all have examples in our lives of, you know, things that, uh, you know, the people that we, we know, but that, that have been part of our walk. You know, of course, many of us will start out in a completely different path from where, where we need to, or where we might end up later in our lives. So our path is not, you know, initial path is not the definer of who we are for the rest of of, of our lives. God will often place people in our path that will help change that trajectory and change us, you know, to be the Christians that he would have us to be. Sometimes it's an easy shift, sometimes it's not, but God will put those people in our place to help us. And he often wants us to be those people in others' lives to be that person that maybe helps change their path towards the towards the light and towards what Jesus wants us to do. Of course, we can all learn from, you know, we talked about this morning, a historical figure, George Whitfield, you know, and, and the path that he was on. Uh, of course, there's also examples throughout Scripture of how, how the path can change if we're open to that. And many of us can think of even people within our family and friends that have had a, a, an impact on the path that we have uh, we walk today with God. As believers, of course, we need to be open to God's plan so that we can walk closer with God. We uh, sometimes, you know, miss opportunities because we're not open with what God wants us to do, but we need to be open to that. And finally, in verse, uh, or in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 16, And then I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless, there, bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. So the Lord wants us to walk with him, and with that walk he will multiply so many things in our lives. He will multiply you know, the love of our family, multiply the, the ministry, and multiply things with, within you know, our path as, as we lean closer on him. And we just have to be open to that, what the Lord would have us to do. It's not, an, not an, always an easy thing, but that's what we need to do. So just remember to... Walk with the Lord today as we leave and go forth into the community. And to, to walk with the Lord as we go through our days, you know, work week, it's not, a, you know, not always easy to do. We get pulled in many, many directions. But make sure we spend the time that we need you know, to walk closer to the Lord. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time time together. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship you. We are so thankful for, for your examples throughout the Bible of verses where people have you know, changed their path. They've, they've learned to walk closer to you and grew in their faith because of that willingness to, to change their trajectory. And Lord, we especially thank you for those that you put in our path that have helped make those things possible. Those, you know, 
potentially, you know, it could be an angel. It could be you just somebody we know that helps put put us in a you know different perspective and and helps us to decide to go in the direction that you would have us to go, Lord. We know that it's not always easy. We know there are various challenges in the path, but we know that if we walk with you, Lord, if we walk closer to you, we will have a better you know, and growing faith, and we will have a fruitful ministry as we work with those around us in our community, as we do missionary work in the larger country and around the world, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you be with our, you know, uh, church body this morning, and we just ask you be with those that couldn't be here this, today. We just ask that you give them safe and travel mercy, traveling mercies. And we uh, ask you to be with Pastor Paul and and Shelley as they tra- continue to travel and give them a safe return. And Lord, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for this opportunity to worship. And we just pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>